Hey guys, to Legit City here. Some of you guys have asked for a video going over power generation and how to prioritize a certain power line as a main line with the other generators only turning on as a backup. So today in the game of Oxygen Not Included, we're going to be going over just that. We're going to be showing you guys how to set up what's known as a power generator priority system that allows you to run a main line and also multiple backup lines that will be running in a tier format, meaning that it's going to go from the highest tier to the lowest tier in terms of priority, which means that you're going to have multiple backup systems if that's what you want. Of course, you usually want a system like this because it allows you to prioritize which resources is being consumed, especially when it comes to the generators. A lot of the times, the resources may be coming from a geyser, so this will help with your resource and geyser management. Now, this design is actually going to be fairly simple and also very flexible in the sense that it's going to allow you to adjust on the fly which system becomes priority. So, let's begin. The smart battery building over here is going to be how we're going to be controlling the generators. This building, when connected via automation wire to the generators, allows a smart battery to turn on the generators once the amount of power being consumed reaches below the load threshold. This will force the generators on until the power generated is above the high threshold stored on the battery in which case it will turn off until the power is needed once again. By doing this, you save on a lot of resource, because if you didn't have a smart battery, the generators will actually keep producing power until you run out of fuel. Now, a lot of the times, you're also going to have multiple generators on your single smart battery line, and of course, a couple of transformers to distribute the power as well. Now, when running a power generator priority system, you're going to want to have the power generators on separate lines whenever possible. Although you're able to run a mixed line with both natural gas and hydrogen generator on the same automation line as a smart battery, I would actually advise for you to redo this into the bottom two instead. Having the separate resources on a separate automation on a separate smart battery allows you to better manage your resources and by doing so you could still accomplish the same task. However, Having the ability to change which one gets consumed on priority is a little bit more advantageous and I would advise to always split it whenever possible. However, it will not be the end of the world if you guys do want to do a mainline like so and have something like maybe coal generators as a backup line. Now a lot of times due to natural progression or because of how the player habits come into effect, you might have a little bit of power generation over here because of a geyser location while your other power is actually established elsewhere. This is actually going to accommodate for such a build as you're going to only have to connect the power system via a power wire that's going to be enough to allow for load and distribution. However, you're not going to need automation wire to extend all the way, so you're going to be able to save a little bit of refined metals. So for today's build, all you would have to do is to have separate generator lines and of course a power line that's connected to both smart batteries. Of course, in between is going to be where you're usually going to have your transformers to redistribute your power. Now, once you have your generators connected to the smart batteries and have a power wire connected on every one of the smart batteries, you can actually start setting up your power system. This would normally feed into some transformers so that you could redistribute the power on smaller wires. And for the most case, choose a heavy wire that allows you to actually maintain the amount of load that you guys will potentially have to pull. Now, once you have the power grid set up and you also have the automation set up for each individual generators and smart battery sets, you can see they're all separated in terms of automation. And that's actually what you need to have for today's build. Once you have that happen, we're going to actually have the high and low thresholds dictate which system becomes priority. For the high threshold, it's always going to be at 90%. And we'll explain a little bit later why that's going to be the case. But that's going to be true on all of your smart batteries. Once you guys have the high threshold set, you're going to be wanting to set the low threshold, which is going to be either 20, 40, 60, or 80. This low threshold value is going to dictate how high on the priority list it's going to be, with a higher value means higher priority. And for the most case, I'm using a buffer of 20 because of how the power consumption is going to affect the other generators I'm turning on. Having a 20% buffer is usually going to be good enough. Now, we turned off the uh, natural gas feed into the generators to simulate what would happen if we were to run out of power on our main line. And what's going to happen is that the hydrogen generators that's at a 6090, which is next in line on the tier list, is going to turn on to make up the power. So of course, we're going to have to wait for the natural gas to run out, but 
it should be fairly quick. Now, in the most case, you could see it goes top down, the main power line before the first backup, and if this can't keep up with it, or it underproduces, or you run out of resource, the coal gem will start to make up for the difference. Now, of course, you could see that its main first backup, second backup, and then final backup, that's going to be tied to the values of the load threshold. And in that case, this is how you set up the power priority setup. Now, there's also an added bonus, where if, of course, we're not able to keep up with the demand of power in the main line, the hydrogen generators, because it's going to be next in line, is going to try to make up the difference. So this means that your system will always try to produce enough power for whatever it is you're trying to consume. Of course, this might mean that you might tap into your resource that it's going to be precious for a backup line. So you guys may want to pay attention to these generators by going to the properties tab to see the uptime of the generators. As the higher the uptime, the more of the backup resources you may be running into or utilizing without you knowing. So it's going to be good to check that out. Of course, we also talked about the 90% threshold, and we'll get into that right now, as that's going to be specific to a couple of other power generators where you cannot manage the resource. Those power generators are typically going to be things like the solar panel or the steam turbine, because you can't control what time of the day the power draw needs to happen at, and because we're not storing a lot of power in a battery bank. And of course, sometimes you need to have your steam turbine constantly running for cooling reasons, for geyser taming reasons, whatever it may be. We're putting these in the same category, and the reason why we have the smart battery set to 90% is going to be because we're going to feed in this power line directly into the power grid. As you can see right here, we have another example of a primary power line with a backup power line at the bottom. We actually have these power generators feed into the system and constantly top off the power, meaning that any power generated just adds into the batteries and we redistribute it on the transformers. Of course, this is going to be only 10% margin, but anytime it's active, it's going to be contributing power. Although this isn't a perfect design, it works well enough to get by. And that's going to be it. Your power system should look something like this, where you have your power generators tied to smart batteries on your separate load threshold setups. And once that's completed, you want all that connected, feeding into your transformer so that you could redistribute the power. If you guys are wondering, the generators always top off the transformers first in terms of power generation with only the extra power being spilt on the smart batteries and even then it's evenly distributed amongst the smart batteries so you guys don't have to worry about anything weird going on however if you guys have a new smart battery built while one's already full power it's gonna have to turn on forcefully but once it actually matches the power level it's gonna become a lot easier to manage not only that, while the new smart battery starts to charge, it's actually adding power to the other batteries as well, so everything gets topped off in the end. But of course guys, if you guys have any questions about this, leave a comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and of course guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you guys!